Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today it is going to be Zoop for the Atari Jaguar. Uh, this is actually a, a game I actually just recently did a scripted video on uh, as of last week as of uploading this. Uh, Zoop is actually one of my favorite puzzle games that a lot of people don't really seem to either know about or enjoy, one, one or the other. Um, so we're going to go ahead and play Zoop. We're going to actually do uh, two gameplay sessions. I'm going to explain how to play the game, and I'm going to play with two different styles, basically. So Zoop is a puzzle game. Uh, you can try to play according to the scoring system, or you can just try to play really fast and just see how long you could survive. Uh, when I try to play to the scoring system, I typically don't get as far into the game uh, as I do if I just play for survival. Um, so before we kick this off though, I wanted to give a big shout out to uh, my Patreon subscribers, or supporters, <laughs> all the fellows that have supported me on Patreon, and uh, the most recent contributor is Oliver Harper, thank you Oliver for your support, and uh, thanks again to everybody else that has uh, pitched in on that Patreon. So Zoop, we are playing the Atari Jaguar version, um, and the Jaguar version is very much like other versions of the game, you only have sound and music options, nothing too crazy there, and uh, you have two different play styles. You've got continual and level. Level basically lets you uh, play uh, a single level at a time, and every time you complete the level, the whole board clears, and you basically start fresh on the next stage. Um, and let me actually do a quick reset here. Fortunately, in the Atari Jaguar, um, and this was standardized for pretty much all Jaguar games, if you press uh, star and pound together, uh, you reset the game, you go back to the title screen. So we're going to do continual though, that's the, the more difficult mode in my opinion. And you can actually start from pretty much any stage you want. Um, what we're going to do is just start from stage one and work our way up uh, from there. So to sort of explain how the game works, I'm going to just play in continual mode and this is going to be my attempt where I try to score as many points as possible. And we'll sort of, sort of uh, compare that to uh, previous scores I've done. So how Zoop operates is you're in the middle of the playfield like this, and uh, your uh, piece in the center of the playfield, your your cursor, is a certain color. Uh, if you attack something by pressing a button that's the same color as you, you clear that color and you get a little bit of points for that. Uh, if you are a different color, you will actually change to that color that you attacked. So if I hit uh, orange when I'm blue, I will turn orange and the orange object will turn blue. Uh, so Zoop can be a little confusing at first, and the idea is to make sure nothing gets into the center of the playfield. If one little piece gets to the center of the playfield, then it's game over. Uh, there are no continues in this game, it's all about just a single gameplay session and seeing how many, how, either how far you can get or how many points you can get, or obviously, you know, a combination of the two. So, um, so yeah, and uh, clearing uh, multiple uh, same colored items in a single swoop gives you more points and so basically what you want to do is you want to sort of like look around the play field it looks like a lot of these things are orange and you want to kind of um, try to match the colors um, up this is uh, the longest chain possible on the vertical section so you get the most points if you can uh, clear those so I'm going to switch this over to orange uh, we need to switch back to orange we'll get that and that and this and we need to switch back to orange again, actually, to clear that out. Here we go, and clear this out. We need to turn blue real quick before this line comes in. So, um, yeah, this is, again, the Atari Jaguar version of Zoop, and it's actually a little difficult to talk and play uh, this game at the same time while explaining the rules, because it is kind of a fast game. It can get overwhelming uh, very quickly, actually. So let's switch back over here. I'm gonna switch over to purple to get a head start on that row, and... And I'm gonna get a head start on that row too. Let's switch back to purple again to get that up there. And you can kind of see how the game works. It's a very simple concept, but uh, it does get intense. And I find it uh, I find it very very fun. Uh, as I mentioned in my video, um, the scripted video, I really enjoy you know arcade style games, and this is very much an arcade style puzzle game. Um, actually, it would have been really cool if this was an arcade game, but uh, it wasn't an arcade game. It was actually uh, made for the console uh, from the ground up, and uh, it was released in 95. And, uh, you know, like I mentioned in my video, and if you guys haven't seen that video, you need to check that out. I, um, you know, put a lot of work into that one, so um, it would be really sweet if you guys could check it out if you haven't seen it yet. 
Um, but yeah, Viacom, uh, Viacom New Media uh, published this game. So basically, Viacom published the game and um, developed from the ground up for console back in the day. And it was released for a crap ton of platforms. It was like nine different platforms. Um, so Sega Saturn, Sony PlayStation, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Atari Jaguar, um, Game Boy, Game Gear. And I actually just picked, picked up a uh, orange power up there. Which, uh, there's a var variety of different orange power-ups that had different properties and whatnot uh, that allow you to clear these pieces a little bit easier in certain cases. And you've really got to watch out for where the pieces are coming from, because if they're like touching the edge of this inner ring here, or inner box, um, then, you know, you need to try to attack those rows or columns first. Um, and, uh, so what I'm doing, again, is trying to play for score. Um, so I'm trying to, you know, build up as many of these things as possible, um, uh, before cashing them in, which is riskier, but you get more points. So now you can only change the colors of the, uh, the frontmost pieces. So if you see, like, multiple colors in a chain, I usually try to just, like, go ahead and clear them out like this, right here. So, like, there's some orange back there. Let's clear out all this green, because I'm not going to be able to do anything about the orange behind them. Uh, my chain will only go so far, basically. My, my combo. So let me try to switch back to purple, clear this out, and clear this out. Uh, but yeah, as far as other versions of the game, um, I mentioned Game Boy, Game Gear, all that stuff. Uh, there was also uh, MS-DOS version of Zoop, uh, as well as uh, it was available on the Macintosh as well. Not something you hear about every day. Not a whole lot of games were ported to the Mac back in the day. Uh, compared to what was available on, on MS-DOS. Ooh, that was close. That one almost came in. So there's also some springs here. And, uh... If you get five springs, you actually clear the entire playfield. You start really relying on those as the game progresses and things get, uh, more challenging. Bam, lots of points for that one. 10,000, I think, is what it was. Um... So let's try to switch this right here, and grab that, and just clear that whole row out. Wow, these are actually starting to get really fast now. Uh, but yeah, I actually, of all the versions of Zoop, uh, this is actually my favorite version to play. And I'll sort of explain why, uh, as we, uh, once we get a game over. And, uh, if you've already seen my Zoop video, you already know why. Um, but, uh... It is a very good reason to to play this version over the other ones if you have access to it. So, I was actually torn on whether I should do a Let's Play of the Jaguar version or the PlayStation version, and uh, I went with the Jaguar version because I don't have as many Jaguar videos as I would like on this channel. And uh, so, hopefully, we can correct that as uh, time goes on. Okay, so that power-up right there, that little, you know, squirrely-looking thing, um, will actually clear all colors on the side of the screen. Um, bam. So, like, that cleared out all the orange ones on that side. Uh, very useful power-up. Very, very useful. Alright, so let's clear this out. Clear those, clear those, clear that, clear this, get that. Alright, so we need to turn blue and grab that. I'm going to grab this power-up here, and I'm gonna use it over there, because that's... That left-hand side was starting to build up quite a bit. And you can kind of see, like, as things get start to get chaotic, um... Things start to get faster, and it, it starts to become quite overwhelming. And it's one of the things I think some people don't like about this game, is it starts to get overwhelming, but that's kind of like... I, I sort of, like, thrive uh, in that style of gameplay when I play video games. So... Alright, although it is actually getting considerably overwhelming now, and unfortunately I've sort of like messed up my, um, sort of like the order of everything, and everything's just a bit of a mess right now, so at this point you just need to do some damage control and try to clear things away. So I'm gonna leave those purple ones on the side, let's try to, you know, pick off this side a little bit, and let's go ahead and grab that. We are getting some good points, though. I am getting some nice full column or full row uh, chains, which is nice. Uh, that's how you build your points up the most. That's three springs right there. Ooh, four springs. Awesome. So, I'm gonna try to save the last spring if I can, whenever it appears. 
And that was actually close as well. Oops, I didn't save it, but that's actually fine. We're, we're gonna basically start fresh. And what I'm gonna do is try to uh, build up Try to build up the rows again. So to build up the rows, you know, you just kind of need to watch the pieces as they come in, and then you need to see if uh, you can switch the frontmost pieces to match the ones behind them. So like, there's a green behind that orange. I can't do much about that. So I go ahead and just like knock it out, and it's actually giving me some pretty good, uh, pretty good placement right now. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and just rid rid of that. And let's see, grab that purple, switch that to purple. So I want to switch, knock out that blue. So there's some more purple right there, orange behind the purple. So I'm going to clear that out. And I'm going to clear out this right here. Switch back to blue, do that. All right, very, very nice so far. We're actually doing all right. Um, You can see how these things are really starting to come in quickly now. And we've actually got a couple springs on the playfield too, which is nice. So let's try to... You kind of want to try to grab those as, as quickly as you can if you want to survive. And I'm going to do that, hit those green ones. So yeah, Zoop is uh, I think it's a, I think it's a really fun game. I, I love playing this game. And game over. Now, I think that's actually level 9 right there as well. So that's actually, you know, for how I was trying to play, which was trying to maximize, you know, the amount of colors uh, lined up with each other. Oh, not quite my high score either. Uh, 272, that was actually, I got, that was actually a pretty, pretty good score for how many objects I quote unquote zooped. 726 versus 1100 as my top score. Um, let's go ahead and put my name in here. So this is actually one of the reasons why I, uh, I like this game so much. Uh, the Jaguar version in, in particular. So let me actually put my gameplay and talk name in here. I don't know if there's an and symbol. There probably isn't. There's a question mark. We'll do a G plus T. It's gameplay and talk. Um, that way, whenever I go back and I play this, I'll know that that was from the Let's Play. So, um, yeah, so basically one of the great things about the Jaguar version specifically of Zoop is that it's the only console version that actually saves your, your high scores when you uh, power the system off. So, um, uh, yeah, so basically most Jaguar games, uh, it was standard for them to be able to save progress uh, onto the cartridge uh, themselves, much like it was also standard to press uh, uh, star and pound to uh, reset the game back to the title screen so you don't have to get up and turn the power off or anything like that uh, as much as the Jaguar gets knocked it's got some really cool little features that a lot of people um, that aren't familiar with it don't know about uh, pretty much every game also has volume controls built into the game as well you can press pause and then option and then you can raise or lower the music volume accordingly turn them all off turn them all the way up whatever turn just the sound effects off uh, and this was like a mandate from atari like every game was required to have this functionality so um that infamous keypad that people like to complain about it actually has some uses the the reset function in particular um but zoop in particular uh, also has the save functionality built in and so when i turn the game off and i come back six months to a year later, I can still try to tackle my old high scores that were on the cartridge. Um, so uh, that top score is actually probably from like two or three years ago when I when I first picked up this cart. So uh, so let's go ahead and continue. This time we are going to uh, try to just play as quickly as possible and just zoop as many uh, objects as, as quick as possible, as fast as we can. I'm not really worried about trying to get chains or anything like that. Um, and I'll just sort of talk about the game a little bit more, and, uh, yeah. So, like I said, I, I think Zoop's a really fun game. Um, I really enjoy playing it. It's a pretty responsive game, it's pretty fast. Uh, it's not really, you know, any input lag I can really think of. Um, 
And pretty much any version you play is a solid version to play. Although I, I do personally recommend some of the, uh, like the 16-bit, uh, versions of the game. Because it's got this, like, sort of, like, chilled out soundtrack. Um... So, I would recommend, uh, of, like, the 16-bit ports, uh, I would, you know, obviously the Jaguar one, in my opinion, is probably the way to go if you have access to it. Um, but I know a lot of you guys don't have access to it. A lot of people in general don't have access to the Jaguar. And, um, but, uh, of the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis ones, I would pr give the edge to the Genesis version, because especially if you're playing it in, like, RGB like I am, um, it actually it looks a little bit crisper than the Super Nintendo one, and I also find the chilled out soundtrack works better on the Genesis sound hardware. Uh, the Super Nintendo version kind of starts with like this really sort of like, not really heavy, but this just like loud in your face tune um, that uh, is also actually in the PC version, um, the MS DOS version, but it's strangely not in the Genesis one or the Jaguar version, uh, the, the tune that's used. Um, yeah, I of the Super Nintendo and Genesis ones, they're both solid versions to play, but I think, like, as far as, like, making the best impact in the player, it's just the, the smoothest experience of the two. I would recommend the Genesis version of Zoop over the Super Nintendo one. Uh, but if you only have access to a Super Nintendo, I mean, that's still a good way to play the game as well. And the uh, Game Boy and Game Gear versions are really solid as well for what they are. The Game Boy one's probably the one you'd want to play the least because it is, you know, black and white. It's harder to see what's going on. Um, you know, instead of having just, uh, you know, four different uh, colored objects, it's patterns. So you'll have like a, a white block, you'll have like a black block. Uh, oh, by the way, the objects are blocks in the Game Boy version of the game. They're not, um, they're not like little abstract shapes or whatever. Um, so you'll have like a black block, you'll have a white block, you'll have a striped block, then you'll have like another kind of striped, it's striped block, it's weird. Um, I feel like in the Jaguar version, these colors also come in a lot faster. I remember, like, doing, uh, capturing footage for that video I did, and just kind of, like, sitting around in some of the other versions of the game. It feels like the Jag version might actually be a little bit more difficult than, uh, some of the other ones. Um, which is kind of interesting. It's, there's actually, it, it's, it's interesting to know that there's actually some, like, subtle differences between, like, the different versions of the game. Um... The, uh, the PlayStation version, um, one of the reasons I usually don't recommend that as, like, the first version to try is that, um, it's, uh, the, the updated graphics, the upgraded graphics for the PlayStation version are kind of cool, I do like them, but the, the backing music, uh, doesn't actually really seem to, to fit Zoop, not in the same way as, like, the, the sort of chilled out music that's playing right now, uh, fits the game. Uh, so when I recommend Zoop to people, it's usually the last version. Not the last version, but it's it's not the first version I recommend. Uh, if it's the only version you have, it's still an awesome way to play the game as well. Um, and I actually, I do enjoy the soundtrack in the game. It's just, uh, I'm so used to like the relaxed soundtrack of other versions that uh, I actually end up preferring um, those versions over the, like, the PS1 uh, version. Now, there's also the Saturn one, uh, Japanese only, surprisingly. It was actually I, supposed to come out in North America. If you see some Zoop advertisements, it actually has the Sega Saturn logo um, in the, uh, the advertisements. So you can see that it was supposed to come to Saturn. Uh, but unfortunately did not. Saturn wasn't, didn't do too well in North America, unfortunately. And, uh, so a lot of games that were supposed to come out ended up getting pulled. Like, uh, Viewpoint was one of them. Zoop was another one. Um, so lots of games that didn't come out to Saturn in North America that were originally slated. Uh, which is quite a shame, but uh, Zoop on the Saturn is basically the PlayStation version um, But there's a few like graphical differences I, I noted in my video that both versions are pretty much identical and they pretty much are except that um, the Saturn has a major issue with uh, transparency and um, So there's like these shadows behind the the colored objects in the PS1 version of the game um in the uh, Saturn version, they're just solid shadows. They're not transparent. So technically, there are some differences. They're not completely identical, but they're basically the same games still. You know, same music, same graphic tile set, things like that. Um, 
But uh, it's also a really cheap import, so if you're the kind of person that's actually going for like real physical discs on the Saturn or something like that, uh, Zoop is a Zoop is really an interesting one to have. Um, I didn't even know it was on the Saturn until uh, like the late 2000s, like 2000. Somewhere like 2010 or 2011, I discovered it. I was like, I was just searching for Saturn games on eBay, and I was like, that looks oddly familiar. And I looked into it, and was like, I was like, holy crap, it's Zoop! I had no idea it existed. I think a lot of people don't know it actually exists on on Saturn. So that was a nice surprise. I picked it up um, when I was still collecting games back then, and uh, played it quite a bit. I liked it. Uh, I liked it a lot, and uh, I did have the PlayStation version. Probably in the early 2000s, I intentionally tried to track it down, uh, but it's not really that common on PS1. It's, uh, it's, I don't think it sold very well when the PlayStation came out. It was a very early release on the system, and, um, yeah, I just, I don't think it sold very well. And, uh, it never got a re-release, which is kind of a shame, like, Zoop would have been, I was thinking about this after I did my Zoop video, like, the PS1 version would have been, like, the perfect... Um, nice springs. The PS1 version would have been like the perfect budget $10 re-release in like 2000, you know, when there was just a lot of like $10 budget games coming out for PS1. And it's really surprising to me that Viacom didn't revisit it. Uh, maybe they, I don't know if they like backed out of like publishing video games at that time. I don't remember seeing too many games by Viacom after the, the mid 90s. Um, but I know they owned like a bunch of other subsidiaries or they have a bunch of of other subsidiaries that were probably still publishing video games. I don't know. Uh, it's maybe something I'll have to look into, but it's kind of surprising to me that they didn't re-release Zoop for the PS1. It would have been the, the perfect budget game. Um, and had they, had it been re-released, I think uh, more people probably would have uh, actually played it. Yeah, especially at that price point, a lot of people were more willing to give certain types of uh, PS1 era games a try when they were budgeting or budget games and not, you know, the full retail price or whatever. And the PS1 was so popular in North America that uh, it got so many decent budget releases. You know, we got Soul Divide, we got, uh, we got uh, Shin Ryu. Um, we got Strikers 1945, and granted these are all like arcade style shoot em ups, but we got some really cool puzzle games too. We got like Cleopatra's Fortune. Um, and we, there's just lots of really neat stuff. We got the uh, Shooter Starfighter Sandvane, which is actually a really awesome game, by the way, if you guys haven't played it. Uh, I hope to try to do uh, an attempted Let's Play on that sometime. That would be pretty fun. All right, so we are getting wrecked here, actually. These pieces are coming in super fast. And we are probably going to lose. I need orange. Orange! There we go. Crap. Game over. Yeah, one other thing that, that's interesting about doing this is I'm also... I finally built my new computer. Um, uh, part of doing this Let's Play was also not just to get a video out, because I do need to get a video out, but it was also to... Um, test my recording setup here and I've been having system reset issues when I'm playing games but I was wondering if those would apply to actually recording videos uh, and so far it doesn't seem like it's so everything's been pretty stable so far um, so I'm just crossing my fingers and hoping for the best but my video export times will be way way faster now I'm on the uh, uh, the new AMD hardware that just recently released in 2017 and um, you know, quadrupled my RAM for my old, old build, and I've got a new GPU, um, and, uh, yeah, so we should be good. Hopefully, you know, making videos for you guys will be a lot easier, um, and running streams and stuff like that should hopefully be, uh, of higher quality as well, so... But yeah, that is Zoop for the Atari Jaguar, guys. One of these days, what I might do is uh, revisit the PlayStation version just to show that to you guys, because I was kind of torn on doing the Jaguar version or the PlayStation version, and I was considering the PS1 version because you just don't hear people talking about it. I think a lot of people uh, don't know that it exists for the PS1 as well. If you look on places like eBay, there's usually not many copies of it available, and the, uh, the condition is varied. Usually, you know, lots of disc only copies and things like that because uh, it was a long box release for the original PlayStation It was one of the uh, the jewel case long boxes uh, Which is oftentimes hard to find those in good shape just because of the fragility of the cases, so 
But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. That's Zoop for the Atari Jaguar. I hope you guys enjoyed this Let's Play. I'll be back with some more Let's Plays sometime soon. Uh, if you're brand new to my channel, please subscribe. I've got many Let's Plays on the channel, many more to come. Uh, feel free to check through my back catalog, and, uh, and uh, hopefully that'll keep you occupied for a while. So thanks, guys. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. I'll catch you soon, and until the next video, take it easy.